Looking for a therapist can suck. It is not fun, especially if you are in need of help. I get a lot of questions from people about how to find the right therapist for them to help them with their specific set of problems. Now, there's a lot of things in play that make finding the best therapist for you a really difficult process. So in today's episode, I want to talk to you about what those dynamics are that make it so hard to find the right therapist and some things that you can do and questions you can ask potential therapists to make sure you're getting the right one for you. These are some tips that most therapists probably don't want you to know about. They don't talk about this stuff very often, and I think it's really, really helpful to have in your back pocket. I hope you enjoy, and I hope you get what you need out of this episode, especially if you're on the market for a new therapist. I'm getting sick of seeing so many couples and friends be completely lied to by their therapists. So I figured it's finally time to lay out some seriously needed education. Therapists are the people that we trust with our deepest, darkest, most personal, and oftentimes shameful secrets. They're supposed to help us navigate the most turbulent and challenging times in our lives. We trust their counsel explicitly and without question because, well, they're a professional counselor. But there's something the therapist community rarely talks about that you should absolutely know before choosing a therapist. A good therapist will let you in on the secret, but most won't. Because if they tell you, they might lose your business. To understand what I'm about to reveal, you have to understand how a therapist becomes a therapist. Now, most people don't know that there are at least half a dozen different ways that you can become a therapist. You can become a licensed clinical social worker, a licensed mental health counselor, often referred to as a licensed professional counselor. You can become a psychologist. You can become a psychiatrist or a licensed marriage and family therapist. And even though each of these degrees will provide you the title of therapist, the stuff that they teach you in each program is completely different. It's kind of the same way that doctors work. You've got ear, nose, and throat doctors. You've got pediatricians. You've got cardiologists, pulmonologists, orthopedics, all sorts of different kinds of doctors. And they all call themselves doctors, and they probably took a lot of the same courses in their first year of med school, but the specialized training that they receive is just that. It's specialized. The patients that doctors serve and how they apply their skills is completely different based on their training. Now, the same is true for therapists. They have specialized training. Here's a few examples. So some therapy grads might get most of their training on how to work with patients in a hospital system, while others learn how to cancel students inside the school system. There are some therapists who get lots of their education helping adolescents overcome substance abuse or eating disorders or addictions, and some who learn specifically about treating entire family systems while other people learn how to help couples overcome struggles in their marriage. Now, back to the doctor analogy. If you have a bad case of pneumonia, I'm going to guess that you're not going to want to go see a gynecologist. You're going to want to see a pulmonologist, right? Somebody who specializes in lung stuff. Now, that same thing should hold true for your mental and emotional health. Mothers with postpartum depression shouldn't be meeting with a therapist who specializes in helping teenage boys overcome their addiction to Adderall. It wouldn't make any sense, and the therapist likely isn't qualified to properly treat that kind of a patient. A therapist mismatch can be really harmful, and it does happen quite frequently. But the problems don't stop there. Beyond the differences in training a therapist receives in school, and even the types of struggles that they've trained to help people through, there's another layer of differences which might be the most important here. Different therapists specialize in different treatment methods called modalities. For example, one therapist might use equine therapy, which is therapy with horses, to help a client learn to build trust, while another therapist might use recreation therapy, which is physical exercise and training, and have their client exercise in a group setting to achieve a similar outcome. Some therapists use art therapy. Some therapists prefer music therapy, and a lot of therapists use emotion focus therapy, or EFT, which focuses on how people form emotional attachments to and bond with others. Now, a lot of marriage therapists will likely use the Gottman method, which focuses more on teaching skills and techniques to practice in parenting and marriage. A lot of marriage therapists are going to likely use the Gottman method, which focuses more on teaching skills and techniques to practice in parenting and marriage. 
Now, mastering many of these modalities requires hundreds of hours of study and training, and different treatment methods work better for different people. Can you see how, if you're not familiar with this industry, it could be really misleading and confusing? And I'm not even finished yet. There is one more bit of crucial information that many therapists won't tell you about. So if you know me, you know that I spend nearly every waking hour studying, writing about, or thinking about marriage and relationships. Now, I was shocked to find out that of the nearly half a million therapists in the United States, only a tiny percent, less than 10%, have any formal training or education specific to couples or marriages. And of those who work with couples, only a tiny portion of those therapists have any training or education around wait for it, sex. Now, I promise I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal here, but simply by pursuing my own curiosity and my propensity to read every marriage book on the planet and my self-directed research over the last couple of years and attending, I don't know, like a dozen seminars from the world's top sex experts, even without grad school, I probably have more training and education around sex and marriage than most therapists do. And if all that wasn't enough, here's the icing on the cake. Any therapist can call themselves a relationship therapist or a marriage therapist or a sex therapist. There isn't any title protection in the industry. So that means right now it is completely possible for a therapist who has only ever studied and worked with and had any experience with working with like anxious toddlers to wake up one day and decide to switch gears, change their title to sex therapist, And then that very afternoon, label a client a sex addict when they themselves have had no specialized training in sex, intimacy, and sexual addictions. That absolutely boggles my mind. This is one of the exact reasons why I decided to pair up with certified sex therapist Kristen Hodson to spend an entire season talking about sex on my show. The season is honestly amazing. You can go back and watch it on YouTube or listen to it on the podcast feed. It's really, really valuable information that most people never get access to. Now, despite all the complexity and nuance in the therapy world, I think it's important for you to have someone to talk to, especially about your relationship. Finding the right therapist can take a little bit of work and a lot of time. So if you're smart, you're going to find an awesome therapist before you actually need one. So I put together a list of tips to help you find the perfect therapist for you. The first step is you got to do your research. Most therapists have a profile on psychology today and their specialties will be listed right on their profile. If they say they specialize in working with kids and teens and couples, that's not a great sign. Look for somebody who has spent their career helping people just like you. If you need help with your marriage, Do you want to work with the guy who has helped hundreds of couples improve their marriages or the guy who wants to mix it up a little from all the substance abuse cases that he sees every week? The more specific their profile is, the more specialized and trained they're likely to be. Now, if they don't list the modalities that they use, call or email them and ask. If you're not sure what the differences in modalities are, ask. Ask how they work. Ask what the experience would be like for you and what kinds of results their clients have had in seeking healing through the various methods that they use. Ask for a free consultation, even if it's not advertised. A good therapist knows that they're more likely to gain your business if they gain your trust. So having a conversation is not a big deal. Another important thing to keep in mind when you're looking for a brand new therapist is you got to know what you want. Some people want a therapist because they need an emotional safe haven where they can work through their struggles every single week. Other people want to address a problem, fix it, and then never see their therapist again. Neither one of these is right or wrong, but being clear about what you want or need out of a therapist is going to impact which therapist you choose. Would you prefer to talk to a man or to a woman? Is it important to you that they understand your religious background or cultural upbringing or sexual orientation? Is their career experience more important to you than having a good therapist-patient chemistry between the two of you? Do you need a therapist who's going to stand up to you and push back on you if you need some tough love? Or do you want somebody who's going to be a gentle guide and provide a safe space for you to unload your hurts? The more clear you are about what you need, the more likely you're going to be to find it. Another great tip when you're looking for a therapist is to ask for referrals. 
The people that you love the most and spend the most time with probably share some of your preferences, like for food or movies or music, and more likely than not, therapists. If you're in need of some help or support, somebody you love might already have done the homework and found the perfect counselor for you. So don't be afraid to ask around and see if anybody you trust has a recommendation. It might save you a lot of footwork and stress. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but another great thing that you can do is talk to your therapist before you meet for an actual session. Think of your search for a therapist like you're interviewing someone for a job. You are literally hiring a therapist to help you get a certain result in an important area of your life. So have a conversation with them before you fork over $150 or more to sit on their couch for an hour and share your deepest struggles with them. Here's some good interview questions that will help you hire the right therapist. What kinds of clients do you love working with the most? Can you give me some examples of clients like me or like us that you've helped in the past? Why did you become a therapist? Tell me about what you specialize in. What's your background and your training? Give them a chance to prove themselves to you. If it feels right, trust your gut, which leads me to the most important point, which is you really do have to trust your gut. Your intuition is the most important thing when it comes to looking for a therapist. If you look at somebody's photo and you get a weird vibe or you have a conversation with them and they make you feel awkward or uncomfortable, don't hire them. It's okay to say, hey, I don't think this is going to be the best fit for us. Thank you. This is one area of your life where you should absolutely be picky. Research actually shows that the factor that most strongly influences a successful outcome in therapy is the therapist-client relationship, not the actual type of treatment method that they use. Now, there's two things that you never want to skimp on when it comes to quality, toilet paper and a therapist, and choosing the wrong one will just leave you in a worse mess than when you started. So trust your gut. You'll know when you found the right one. So now I just want to summarize really quick. The world of therapists is vast and complex, and it can be really confusing, especially if you're in dire need of talking to somebody right now. So remember, some therapists try to cast a wide net by saying that they specialize in working with everybody in a desperate effort to snag any client that they can. And other therapists invest in highly specified training so that they can effectively serve a clear-cut subset of people with very specific needs. And any therapist can call themselves a sex therapist or a relationship therapist or a marriage therapist. So make sure you ask them about their credentials and their training. A highly trained sex therapist will almost always be ASEC certified. And the Gottman Referral Network is a great place to start looking for a marriage therapist who is a very highly trained therapist. Finding the right therapist is important and it might take some legwork. It can be the difference between a marriage succeeding or a marriage failing or the difference between struggling with an issue for a couple of weeks or struggling for years. It requires a little bit of work and investment, but the support a good therapist provides can last a lifetime and truly transform your life. If you found this episode useful, I want to invite you to subscribe because I have tons more information and tips on how to create a ridiculously awesome relationship. So do your relationship a favor and hit the subscribe button, and I will be back next week with another episode. Look, I am a firm believer that most couples don't need therapy to have a great marriage, but it's incredibly rare that you'll ever get the type of marriage that you're capable of without a little bit of guidance and encouragement. There's just too much working against you, whether it's the fact that you didn't grow up with good examples of marriage or the terrible stuff that we get exposed to from Hollywood and reality TV, or just the fact that you're two imperfect humans trying to create an amazing life together, even though nobody has ever taught you how to do that. Now, I'm a firm believer that working on your marriage shouldn't have to feel like work. And that's exactly why I created the Epic Marriage Club. Here's how it works. You get regular monthly workshops and trainings from the top marriage experts in the world. Then every single week, I transform those lessons into an actionable experiment that we'll do together because you only get results when you take action. And you'll be doing these experiments with an amazing community of awesome couples that care as much about having a great marriage as you do. Plus, I'll do a monthly Q&A session to make sure that you never get stuck or hung up on anything. It's literally everything you need to have a truly epic marriage. And the best part, it's freaking fun. 
You get all that and a whole bunch of other awesome stuff that I haven't mentioned yet for the price of a movie ticket. So go sign up right now at epicmarriageclub.com.